So hello everybody, welcome as I said to our social action session three. Thank you for those who are joining us here. I'm just going to try and get the presentation a little bit bigger for you. And we are starting. So for those who haven't joined our social action sessions before, we're just going to go through a few quick ground rules of what to do what's going to happen whilst we're having our discussion during the session. So it's really important that we can be open with each other. And I think we might have lost the screen, just bear with me one second. Uh, be open with each other and share things with each other. It's also really important to keep the conversation in the room. So we might share some things that we don't really want to go elsewhere. So if we're sharing sort of personal, uh, personal experiences or stories, we might want to not uh, use people's real names or anything like that. Uh, if we're trying to keep it confidential. Also, we want a non-judgmental approach. So we don't want a, anybody to feel like they're being judged on things that they might be sharing with us. Everybody should feel able to share whatever they would like to. Uh, everybody has the right to pass. So if you don't want to answer a question or you don't want to discuss something, then that is absolutely fine. We should also make no assumptions. So not assume anything about anybody else or um, assume anything about a situation before we have all of the facts. It's really important to listen to others. We should be careful of the language that we use. Sometimes slang language can be offensive to some people, so we should be careful to not use language that could be offensive to anybody else who's joining in in the session or listening back afterwards. Uh, we should also be open to asking questions, uh, and also we should be open to seeking help and advice where we feel we might need it. So our session today is going to be about emotional manipulation. This might be something that you've heard about before, might be the first time you've ever heard about it. We're going to be focusing first on the power of emotion, and then we're going to come around to critical thinking. But first, we're going to speak about the power of emotion. So I'm going to show you three images. But before I do that, I'm just going to give us a bit of a background on what emotional manipulation is. I'm not sure what you can see now. It's just gone a bit funny. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to explain that emotional manipulation can be seen in most, in most forms of communication, such as advertising, political messaging, and news editorials. If used for positive causes, such as promoting charitable initiatives, emotional manipulation might ev evoke feelings, might make us feel feelings of empathy and responsibility, which could lead to us donating time or money. But also it can be a negative tool persuading individuals to act and think in a certain way, which doesn't reflect their good nature. That's to come to a bit more about it afterwards. I just also want to say that young people like yourselves who are here now or maybe listening back are extremely susceptible, so extremely sort of vulnerable to emotional manipulation, especially online. Social media influencers might use emotional manipulation in order to advertise products uh, and young people themselves might use it to promote good causes such as sort of youth action against climate change, um, which obviously those kinds of things can go viral online and can be used for good rather than uh, sometimes not so good. So I'm going to now show us the three images that I mentioned before. Um, and I'm going to show them to you. And I want you to have a think about what these images are. How do you feel about them? And why do you feel like that? And what maybe links all three together? So can everybody see the first image on the screen, which is a poster? Let's just see if I can make it a bit bigger for us. I can. Uh, which is a poster. Um, and it's maybe about something that we know a little bit about. So have a think about what you feel about that, what that image makes you feel, and why does it make you feel that way? And then I'm going to move to the next image which is also a bit of an advert how do we feel about this image sorry if it's a bit grainy i tried to make it uh, as big as i could 
So what do we feel about this? Why do we feel about this? And what maybe links this picture to the last picture that we saw? Have a think. About well, it. have a think. I'd say that this one more, Gracie. There's still one more. So just think about oh, it. Oh yeah. And then number three, also from a charity, a different charity to ours. What do we feel about this picture? Why do we feel about this picture? Why do we feel like that? And what maybe links the three pictures together? So if I go back, I'll just show us the first picture again, and the second picture again, and the third picture again. What do people think? We do you have something to say, Gracie? Well, I'd say the first and second ones um almost making you feel guilty that you're not doing something about it make you feel a bit guilty what does make what makes you feel guilty about this first one well it's not particularly guilty but it feels it's telling you that we have to do more almost yeah and if you're not doing more at a certain point then you're not helping for sure like, um, and also the um the middle picture is, I assuming, is promoting the army. Um, right, yeah. And it's showing people in army uniforms who are really happy, which is, it's telling you that people in the army are very happy. Yeah, exactly that. Does anybody have anything else to add to anything there? Of how those pictures made them feel? Somebody's just put something in the chat. Tommaso says the second one portrays the military in a positive way, which is in contrast with the third picture. That's right. So the third picture is kind of the uh, impact that some military have had on these people, uh, which I believe they're in Gaza. We can tell from the headline. And this picture makes it look like everybody who joins the army is very happy and does happy things. Does anybody have anything else to add? Maybe what links these three pictures together? They all make you have an emotional response to them. That's right. Okay. They all make us have an emotional response. So whether, as Gracie said, whether we feel a bit guilty about not doing anything about climate change, all of the pictures in this image make us think that it's humans that have done the damage and humans that can solve the damage and you might feel guilty if you're not doing anything. This one makes us feel leaders saying what links them is that they're made to make you feel a certain way, exactly that. So again, like we said, this picture of the military is making us feel like everybody in the military has a big smile on their face the whole time. And then when we compare it to this last picture, uh, it makes us think that actually there's a different side. Exactly that. So emotional manipulation, the uh, definition that I've got here is a persuasive technique used to influence people by appe appealing to their emotions rather than getting them to think things through. Do we agree with that definition? I'd say yes. Gracie agrees. Lida, do you agree? Isabel, what do you reckon? I'm taking that as an agree. I haven't heard. Isabel says that they agree as well. So let's have a little discussion. Adam said sounds like a good definition. I, I agree. So let's have a discussion either in the chat, as I said, or if you might want to unmute your microphone and tell us. Where, first of all, where might we find emotional manipulation? We've just seen three images, but where? what are those images used for? Where might we find it? Have a think. Well, it could be used to get people to support your charity or join a certain group. Yeah, exactly that. Leaders put in the chat that often in charities and adverts. Definitely, I would agree with both of you there. Anywhere else where we might find it, what other kind of places might we find something that makes us feel emotional um, and makes us, makes us sort of feel our emotions going towards it and kind of swaying us in different directions. Uh, 
Lida says in books, yeah, that, that's true. In books, sometimes things can make us feel emotional to kind of take us down different parts of the story. And also Lida saying in newspaper articles as well, definitely in newspaper articles, in our internet news, online news, and also in the news uh, on the TV as well. Let's have a think now whether emotional manipulation is good or bad or whether it can be both. What so if you've got some really, if you've got some really good music that can be really good manipulation if you've got really good a really good tune that, yeah, that gets you going definitely and we're going to come to a few that's a really good point adam that we're going to come to it's watching some videos in a little bit where we might hear that kind of uh using music or using kind of a, a different backing track of how we want to make somebody feel Gracie says books can make you care or hate characters. Yeah, it can make you care about a character because of how it makes you feel emotionally and they can make you not like a character as well. Definitely. What do we think about whether emotional manipulation is good or bad or maybe sometimes both? What do we reckon? Leader said that sometimes we use it in adverts. Is that a good way? Is that a bad way? Can it sometimes be both? Let's have a think about what adverts make us feel different emotions and why they make us feel that, that way. Tommaso says, is the word manipulation bad by def definition? I think sometimes people think that manipulation can always be bad because some people use it for bad but i guess maybe there is an argument also that sometimes it's good as adam kind of said if we've got an upbeat music in the background then that might manipulate us to think something's really good and a bit like the picture of of the um army people that we saw before in the picture they're trying to uh, portray a good image but maybe the background is is bad gracie says sometimes getting your favorite celebrity on an advert and then you might pay more attention to it definitely that is manipulation because it's something that uh, it might be a celebrity that you like Leader says it can be good if it makes you care about something important, but it can be bad because it manipulates people into thinking or feeling a certain way. Very, very true. So let's think back to our um, climate change poster that we just looked at. It's definitely telling us, making us more aware of something important. And as Gracie said, maybe making us feel guilty, um, which is a bad feeling that we're not doing something about it, but actually that could have a good outcome. But as um, I think Lida says, maybe it can manipulate you into thinking or feeling a certain way that the creator wants you to think. Can anybody think of any examples other than the ones that we've just looked at of emotional manipulation? Has anybody seen any in the news? Has anybody watched a video recently that's made them feel a certain way or read a piece of news that made them feel a certain way? Have a think. I'm sure that people have seen lots of things. Tomato says soft drink advertisements at the cinema before the film starts. That's very true. Sometimes if you're at the cinema, they might advertise soft drinks and they might make you feel thirsty or might make you feel like you need to go and buy one before your movie begin begins or get some popcorn. Gracie said, telling you that if someone did something wrong and it affected you, then anyone like them is the same. Do you want to explain that a little bit more, Gracie? I guess maybe you're saying that they can kind of generalise about certain people and how those people make you feel and that everybody in that, in that category must make you feel a bad thing. Yeah, so sort of singling out certain types of people that may be affected by the similar things that you're affected by. 
and that everybody's in the same boat. I can understand that. Definitely is is emotional manipulation. Anybody get any other examples they can think of of emotional manipulation that they might have seen in the news or online or anywhere? Going to move on. If people are still typing, that's fine. I will have a look at the chat in a second. So we're going to have a look at a couple of videos now. Um, hopefully that's going to work through the screen. What I want us to do after we've watched, we'll watch one at a time. So after we watch the first one, think about all the emotions that we feel whilst we're watching the video uh, and what different techniques have been used in the video to manipulate the viewers and what has the content mm -hmm been designed to manipulate why has the content been designed to manipulate the viewers so what is the aim of the video so let me just get up our videos and double check that everybody can see the right thing bear with me if you're sharing your screen it should share everything that's on your screen yeah it does it's not that simple but thank you we're going to come here. So our first video, hopefully everybody can see. We'll just wait for it to load. And hopefully we can hear the sound as well. I'll try and make it full screen. So we're thinking about what this video makes us feel, which emotions it makes us feel. Why do we think the people who made the video want us to feel that emotion? Um, and then we'll discuss a little Okay, what did people think about that? Oh, just let me, otherwise we'll watch it again. What did people think about that? What kind of emotions did that make us feel? Let's go back to our questions. How many- It made you feel sad for the dog. Made you feel sad for the dog, definitely. Any other emotions that we might be feeling? Any other emotions that anybody else that saw it might be feeling? Lisa says it probably would have made me sad if the dog wasn't a toy. That's interesting. 
it's trying to play again for us. Um, that's an interesting thing. Do you think it would have made you feel different if it was a real dog that we were seeing a pic we were seeing in our in the picture and in the video? I think it probably, as Lita said, would have made made them a bit more sad if it was a real dog. So, anything else? Lita saying, if it were a real dog, they would feel sad and guilty. And Gracie saying, it felt weird it being a toy. Um, would have been it would have been better. I see, I see. So maybe if it was a real dog, you might feel a bit more guilty, but it also might make other people, maybe younger viewers, feel either, uh, so guilty and maybe very upset and sad, as Lida says, that that was a real dog and maybe it's easier to understand with um, a toy dog rather than having a real dog some of our younger viewers or maybe people who have had sad experiences with, with real animals in real life. So we have to think about that too. So why do we think this has been, this content has been manipulated, uh, has been designed to manipulate viewers? What are they trying to achieve out of this video, do we think? Gracie says to get more to get people to adopt and or take more care of their dog. Yeah, very good. Lida says so that people care about all the puppies that are abandoned at Christmas. Very much so. I think it's definitely trying to show that bad things definitely happen and that there's a way that we can, as Gracie says, take more care of our dogs or, or any animal that we might have. Perfect. Thank you for sharing your feelings on that gonna now show us another video which is slightly different but i want us to think about the same questions how do what emotions does the video make us feel uh what techniques have been used there to manipulate the viewers so in that first one it was about making us feel a bit sad what kind of techniques i guess we didn't really talk about that which techniques did that first video use to make us feel um the ways that we just described and make us feel like we could take more care of our animals or make us feel like um, we don't want so many dogs to be abandoned at Christmas. What techniques were used? Adam mentioned one of them earlier. Gracie says putting a child in a cute toy in the ad, that's definitely a technique to make people kind of go, oh, that's so cute. Um, it's definitely a good technique to make us feel certain emotions. Anybody got any other techniques that might that they can think of that were used in the video? I'll tell you the one that Adam said earlier was that the music in the background was quite a sad song. I'm not sure how well that came through on the on the speaker, but the music was quite kind of slow and calm and quite a sad song. And so that also can make you feel a certain way that if there was a very happy song playing in the background, it would be different. Okay, I understand maybe the music didn't come through, but that's okay. Hopefully you can hear this next one because I think that they're speaking, but I think that if we can hear it, let's have a look at the next one and see whether what emotions we can feel from the next one. Hopefully you can hear it this time.
Okay, what kind of emotions did we feel from that video? Were they different from the first one? Or are that some of the emotions the same? Or what kinds of things do we feel after watching that video? I couldn't hear it and the subtitles were out of oh, sync so from my one. You should have said, you should have said. So this advert, I will explain for those people that couldn't see, is basically an advert for going out and picking for Britain because during the crisis at the moment, we can't, uh, we haven't been able to employ people from overseas to come and pick our fruit and vegetables, which means that we've got less fruit and vegetables. We need more uh, British people to take on those roles. So basically what this advert was, is quite a few of those people who have taken on these roles who are as you can see in the video previously this person was a bartender for example and somebody else was a marketing manager so they all had different jobs before and what the video is basically saying is it's a lot of different people telling us their good experiences and why they're enjoying picking for britain so what they like about it, one person said that they've made lots of new friends and they've been doing a really good job. Somebody else said it's their first, last chance to become a key worker. And people, the cameraman asked at one point, is it difficult? Do you get used to the hard work very quickly? And they said, yeah, I got used to it very quickly and it's improved my fitness. So all of these things are sort of good news stories from people who have started working for the Pick for Britain campaign. So hopefully my little explanation helps a little bit. What kind of emotions, when I'm telling you what the, what the video is about, are you sort of thinking of? I guess already I've explained that this one is maybe more of a positive video, whereas the other one was not so positive. What, <laughs> out of the things that I described about the video, what do we think the techniques that could have been used? And from the pictures that you could see, what kind of techniques do we think we use? And how might it have made you feel if you could see it? Which I will link. Tommaso says the music makes the video sound very positive and cheerful. Yep, there definitely was a positive song in the background, which I understand not everybody could hear. It definitely made it sound and feel a bit more positive than the last one. That is very true. Leader says, I think the video is trying to make people volunteer to pick stuff and tells people that if you do, you'll be very fit and happy. Exactly that. So for those people who think that would be really great if I was fit and happy, uh, look at these people. They're doing they're doing picking of fruit and vegetables and they all look fit and happy and they're telling me that they're fit and happy. So I'll be the same. Uh, Gracie says, it makes you feel like you should do it because you can be part of something. Exactly that. I agree. It makes you feel like you can make a difference quite quickly and quite easily. Uh, they kind of made it out to be quite easy. Um, Gracie also says it also gives you a chance to be a key worker and key workers get a lot of praise. Yeah, so they use the phrase in the video, this is my chance to be a key worker. And I think at the moment, uh, being a key worker kind of puts you into that sort of hero category. So if you're waiting to sort of um, become a hero or to have a have some praise, as Gracie says, then maybe this is something that you're going to take on. Hi, Johan. Thanks for joining us. So we're going to – that was really good that we can go through those videos and sort of – everybody see what 
what emotional manipulation sort of looks like. So both of those videos use emotional manipulation. So just quickly before we move on, do people think that those two videos, were they good emotional manipulation or were they bad emotional manipulation out of those two that we just watched? Do we think that, that they had a good intention of emotional manipulation or a bad intention of man emotional manipulation? It's becoming a bit of a tongue twister. <clears throat> what do people reckon? Was it for good intentions or was it to make us, uh, was it for bad intentions, do we think? Just wait and see if anybody puts anything in the chat. Adam says they're neutral for me, important to understand what they want. It's definitely important to understand what people want out of it. Gracie's saying the people who made them had the right reason to make people emotional because it's important. So they were both important causes. So maybe they were using good intentions because they're important causes that um, will help lots of people and lots of animals as well in the long run. So we need to be aware of emotional manipulation, which is exactly what Adam just said. That it's important to understand what they want. Let's have a little, let's create a little checklist between us of what, um, what kind of questions we could ask ourselves to help us recognize and respond to emotionally manipulative content. So an example that we've got here is, what is this advert trying to achieve, which is what I just asked, asked you. Leader says that both videos had good intentions because they're important, like Gracie said. Yeah, exactly that. So let's have a think of some questions that we can ask ourselves, like what is this advert trying to achieve that can help us to think next time we see a video of what, how we can be more aware. Johan saying, who is saying it? Exactly that, that's really important as well. Is it the RSPCA asking us to do that? Or is it maybe an organization that has different intentions and different uh, objectives in the long run? So that's a really good one. So we've got, what is this advert trying to achieve? Who is telling us or who is saying it? Any other questions that might be useful as a checklist for us to make us more aware of emotional manipulation? Maybe a good question. Grace is saying, is it really so important that they need to make you feel that way? So if it is a very emotional, makes you feel very sad or emotional or guilty or even very happy, um, is it really so important that they need to make you feel that way? So if we're feeling very guilty, like the one that we just watched about looking after our pets and looking after our dogs, I think it really is quite important to look after animals. But to somebody else, it might not be. So maybe for ourselves, we need to think, is it really so important that they need to make us feel such strong emotions? That's a good question. Do we see if we can come up with two more? Anybody got any other um, ideas of what kind of questions we might ask ourselves? Tommaso says, who are they trying to reach? What is their target audience? Really important as well. Are they trying to reach us or are they trying to reach somebody else who's maybe a different demographic to us? Johan says, can I check that this is true? That's a really good that's a really good question to ask ourselves as well. Somebody might try and make us feel a certain way about something, but they might not be telling the truth. So it's really good to check that our emotions are validated and are in the right place. Um, and that kind of also takes us back to your other question, Johan, which was who who is telling us it? So that's really good. Five questions on our checklist. So that brings us on to our second part of the session, which is about critical thinking, which is also very important. So critical thinking can be looking more deeply into something or thinking about something with a different hat on and maybe asking us these questions. Gracie says, are people and animals actually going through this? Yeah. So that's exactly the same as can I check that this is true? So maybe looking at another source and seeing whether they're saying the same thing or whether um, what we talked about in our fake news session, whether there's just sort of this has come out of the blue and nobody has ever mentioned this before. Very important. 
So what our task is for the next sort of 10 minutes is that we're going to, we could either do this together or we could do this uh, individually, is to create our own manipulat uh, emotionally manipulative content. So we need to have a think about something. Um, and this could be a petition to our head teacher for something that we'd like to see change in school or something that we'd like to see change maybe in our homes, a petition to our adults at home. Uh, we could design our own animal welfare or environmental protection charity advert, a bit like we did before. I don't expect people to come up with a whole advert right now, but give us some ideas of what you might include in your content. Uh, you could also come up with your own creative option. So something different to a petition or a welfare or an environmental protection advert, but maybe something that we feel strongly about, but remember to keep it appropriate so that we can share it with everybody. So I'm going to give you all a couple of minutes maybe we'll need five, maybe we won't need as long, to have a think. You might want to grab your pen and paper now and write down maybe what your advert would look like. So what does a good example of this kind of thing look like? So whilst you're creating your content, and again, like I say, it doesn't need to be a whole uh, polished advert or anything like that, but you might think about whether you're going to have any music in there and tell us about that. Is it going to be a happy song? Is it going to be a sad song? Is it going to be a song that makes us feel a certain way? Make sure we have an impact on our audience by having a clear objective. So as somebody said as one of their questions, what does the organization or the company or what whoever's making the video want to achieve out of this? So, for example, to raise money or to raise awareness. Uh, and also to have a sort of structured narrative. So let's have a think about how, if we're doing an advert, how would it begin? What kind of images are we showing and how might it end? So I'm going to give you a couple of moments to think about that. I'll just go back to our last one again as well so that we can have a think and then we can present to the rest of the group uh, if, we, if we want to uh, uh, in a couple of moments. To give you a couple of moments to think about that and think about the questions of what makes a good example, and then we'll come back together. Okay, I'm just going to give you one more minute to get down some ideas and then we can present and we can either type it out in the chat or you can unmute your microphone and share with us your, your emotionally manipulative content.
Okay, do people want to share the ideas that they've had just over the last couple of minutes? I understand it might not be a polished thing. Gracie, do you want to share with us? And then others, if you want to write in the chat, if you want to share with us, you can either share it in the chat or unmute yourselves after Gracie. So my one's about, um, um, is an emotionally manipulative advert for Woodcraft folk. Okay, perfect. Tell us, tell us about it. So. Woodcraft Folk, Children Changing the World. The Woodcraft Folk is a youth group in which kids and teens play, learn, and do all sorts of other things together. The, the children who go to Woodcraft learn about the world around us, peace, and all sorts of important topics so that they don't feel that they can't do anything to help the world. Join the Woodcraft Folk. Thousands of children or, already love it. That's got happy music, kids actually saying the words and pictures of kids like playing and things like that. Yeah, and what kind of emotions are they going to kind of come through, do you think, to people? It's making people feel like they're, they don't, that they can actually change their current situation if, so, if something's going wrong that they can actually do something to change it yeah definitely does anybody else have anything to say about grace's idea maybe kind of answering questions from our checklist earlier which is really good what kinds of things if we were making an advert an emotionally manipulative advert like grace's for woodcraft folk what kinds of uh, achievement would we hope to get out of that do people think as woodcraft folk making that making that uh video and that advert tomaso says good example i agree well we want more members that's the outcome isn't it more more people engaging with woodcraft and more 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 people understanding what we do and joining with us I completely agree. So, so out of making that video, which Gracie said has very happy music, very lots of pictures of everybody enjoying themselves, of young people doing things, um, definitely is going to get us, hopefully, some people going, oh, that looks really fun. I'll, I'll join them as well. And as Adam says, give us some new members. Exactly that. Gracie says to help even more kids I know are uh, to know Woodcraft Folk helped me a lot be a lot more happy yeah exactly that and so we can share our experiences of what have made us happy and share that with other people to hopefully make them happy too Leader says lots of emotionally manipulative manipulated adverts make you feel unsatisfied like you should be doing something or joining something etc well done I completely agree so people might feel a bit unsatisfied I don't go camping in the summer and I've just seen lots of pictures and a video of people going camping in the summer I'd like to do that so maybe I should join woodcraft folk and I can go camping with everybody else exactly that well done Gracie that was really really good I think that that definitely would be an effective use of emotional manipulation um, and it's one that definitely lots of organizations use and a bit like we did over the weekend saying anybody else want to be involved in our big campaign look how much fun we've been having on the big campaign it makes people feel like they want to have fun as well johan i think you've got something for us there do you want to unmute yourself and tell us about it Mine's about like um, how kids don't have food and we just said like uh, kids are playing by themselves and they're just playing with no toys and whatever's there and they're just talking about like how they want to go to school because they get dinner and get because it's free and um, they're always thinking about how much if they were had money how much food they could have and that's it really and is yours a sort of video of showing a bit like grace is showing these people who want the food the young people who need the food and don't have any uh, yeah yeah so exactly that so johan's idea so it's more of a different kind of thing is there a call to action in yours johan are we trying to raise money to to get people that food or are we are you just showing that some people are unfortunate and don't have food uh it's just to show just to uh, raise awareness 
just to yeah perfect what well, that's a really really good idea so showing that some people don't have don't have any food and that people go to school just because at school they can get a free school meal and i think that's a situation for quite a lot of people in our country unfortunately how did other people feel when they were hearing johan's ideas and what kind of things might be in in his emotionally manipulative content what kind of emotions did that make us feel hearing about young people who are like ourselves but maybe don't have anything to have for lunch? I guess especially in this situation where schools are most schools are closed to most people, then that means that lots of people might be in that situation where they go to school for their biggest meal of the day and that they can't go. So what kind of feelings does that make us feel if we were to see those pictures as well, not just hear about it? I agree with Tommaso that it's a really good example. It's a really powerful example of, of um, uh, emotional manipulation and, um, and it, it's something that needs to be said. Definitely. And definitely through, through emotional manipulation, you can definitely raise awareness, even if you haven't got a message at the end that says, call this number to donate or do this. You've definitely raised awareness and people might take it upon themselves to get onto Google or get onto somewhere else to find out how they can help people. So Lida says that video would probably make me feel sad and guilty that I have enough food while other kids don't. Exactly that. I think that's a really good point. And I think that Johan's example is really good, that it can kind of provoke that emotion of people saying, I just had a really yummy cheese sandwich for lunch, but not everybody out there has had that. So it makes you feel a bit guilty. And Gracie says it can also make you feel grateful that they have things, that you have things that other people and that they could do without some things to help others. Exactly that. So we could have less ourselves to be able to bring stuff for others when we've got plenty. I think that's a really great idea, Johan. Thank you for sharing with us. Do we think that if we were to watch Johan's video or his kind of uh, performance or whatever it might have been with pictures of young people who haven't had any lunch, who need to go to school for these things, do we think that that would um, do we think that that would achieve raising awareness about uh, young people who haven't got enough to eat? Do we think that this video would help us raise awareness? Because that was what the goal was that Johan told us. Do we think this video would raise more awareness about young people without food? I think it would personally. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a really good way to raise awareness. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. Gracie also says that she thinks that it would as well. Does anybody else would like? Would anybody else like to share with us maybe their idea? Lida says that def that video would definitely raise awareness. Really good, really good example, Johan. Thank you for sharing. Has anybody else got an example that they might want to share us of their ideas for emotional manipulative, emotionally manipulative content, and what they would like to ra either raise awareness or have a call to action about? Just wait to see if anybody's going to put in the chat if they want to share anything with us. But maybe our two examples are perfect enough. So well done to those two. Leader or Isabel or Adam or Tommaso, if you want to share with us, feel free and we'll come back. I would love to hear it, Adam, if, you, if you've got one to share. Yeah, okay, I'll give it a go. Uh, so I thought I would do one on um, uh, plastics in the environment, and I would, I would start out with some sad music and show some, uh, I don't know, maybe pictures of turtles eating plastic bags and sharks and fish, the insides of sharks and fish with uh, plastic inside them. Uh, uh, picture, uh, somber voices describing plastics on the beaches, and then maybe, I don't know, maybe a microscope picture of sand, but showing how much plastic is in sand. And then uh, I would... I might do a key change and go for some uplifting music and an encouraging voice and asking where is it going, what's it doing to you and what are you going to do about it? 
that, that so, thank you, thanks very much for sharing that. What do people think about Adam's example? Gracie says it's a really good example. I think so as well. It's definitely raising awareness. And I think that showing a sort of something as small as a piece of sand and showing how plastic can even kind of affect something that small is a really good example of um, using our emotions of thinking about the bigger picture around something so small. Do we think that this targets our own emotions? And how does it how does it do that? Gracie? I think it's a really good idea to have like the key change in the middle that like like yeah, this is really sad, but people are doing things about it and they're not just ignoring it and it's carrying on. Like in the other in the some other sad videos, it's just to make you feel guilty. But that, that made you, Adam's idea made you feel almost um, like invigorated to do something rather than, oh, just, just all sad. Yeah, I completely agree. It definitely gives you hope, as Leader just put in the chat, in the same time that I said it, we must great minds think alike. So it makes you think that, that although this very sad thing has happened, and as Johan says, it reminds us not to litter. So we know that we're not going to, that that's a bad thing, and we haven't done that. But as, I, as uh, Gracie just said, with that key change and that kind of more encouraging and happy voice, we hear that maybe we can actually make a difference. Um, and change that sort of badness and put that badness in the past and make the, the future a little bit brighter and better. Does anybody else have anything to share? Thank you, Adam, for sharing that great example. We've had three really good examples. Does anybody else have one to share or shall we go to the next slide? I'll see whether anybody's gonna come back with anything. Oh. So that takes us basically to the end of our session about emotional manipulation. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for one second so that I can um, speak to you more. Um, so I think those are really good examples that we saw at the end there of people really thinking about emotional manipulation and how they could use it in in a con in some content that we kind of create ourselves do we think that emotional manipulation can come in to everything and not just the news where else in our lives might we see emotional manipulation now that we've had a think and made our own examples we might have a think about what other things and other places where we might have seen emotional manipulation gracie well, it could be something as simple as a friend, say, for instance, saying, oh, you should really go to this shop. It's got really good. I had really not a lot of fun with the toy that I bought from there or something like that. Yeah, exactly that. Definitely. And Johan just put a really good one in the chat from from our parents. Sometimes we can have emotional Population, or like Grace says, from our friends or from our parents, if they say, oh, it would make me really happy if you ate your broccoli, then that definitely is a bit of emotional manipulation. It's definitely a good good thing to eat our broccoli, but it's good to be aware of that in, in our world around us. So thank you so much for joining our session. Uh, next week is a session from Tommaso, which is about hate speech, and that's our next social action to look into. Tommaso, do you want to tell us anything about that session to be prepared for for next week? Um, sure, yeah. So as you said, it's about hate speech and we're going to discuss hate speech online, uh, where we found it, where we find it and how we can respond to it. And yeah, looking forward to discuss with you next week. Perfect. Thank you so much, everybody, again, for joining. Gracie says that people can do it without really realising it. Definitely can be done without realising it. Sometimes, as we said, it has good intentions and sometimes not so much. So thank you again for joining. I'm putting a link in the chat now for our uh, survey for evaluation and feedback for our online programme. It would be really great if you could fill that in so that we can make our online programme as fantastic as it can be and filled with things that our young members want it to be. So those who haven't 
uh, already, check out our new website, dreambigathome.uk. And tomorrow, we've got an Elfin and Pioneer craft session. And on Thursday, a session to try and make a 1,000 origami peace cranes. So lots of fun things coming up this week. But for now, I will say goodbye. Have a lovely evening. And we will see each other again soon. Bye.